तक पहुंची सो वेलकम टू द शो डॉक्टर नर्जस थैंक यू वेरी मच ओके सो लेट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस डिस्कवरी व्हाट इज दिस डिस्कवरी ऑल अबाउट व्हाई इट इज बीइंग सेड दैट दिस डिस्कवरी दिस इज अ डिस्कवरी ऑफ द सेंचुरी पूरी सेंचुरी की डिस्कवरी है क्यों कहा जा रहा है Well, you know, I think only time will tell if that's really true. Uh, it's it's a it's a monumental discovery because what we've really done, you know, this group of people of whom I'm 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 part of it. Uh, what we've really done is we've sort of established a new way of doing astronomy, a new way of looking at the universe, and that's really what's very big about it. It it is that. suddenly we should we'll have a way of looking out into the universe that we haven't had before okay so just tell me that how it affects uh, the way we think of the world yeah so you know i think when you look out into the so first of all humans since the beginning of 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 history have looked out into the sky and wondered what's out there and and we have learned over the millennia that what's out there is really important to what we are here because the building blocks of everything we're made of comes from the rest of the universe so when when he, everything we know about the universe so far most everything comes from light we kind of we point our telescopes when we collect light we collect light from the stars what we're doing now with with this discovery is we're saying we don't only use light we also use this other messenger this carrier of energy called a gravitational wave and that is that contains inside of it it's due to the gravity of of star systems and as a result it contains quite different information than what light can do so it gives us an, the ability to look out into the universe using a, a completely new tool okay okay dr ajay says uh, in pakistan there is quite a hype about you and everyone wants to know more about you so i would like to start from uh, from your birthplace where was where really you born in karachi i actually was not born in karachi i'm told i was born uh, in lahore oh you was born in lahore in karachi oh, you was yeah. born in lahore that's right but i grew up in karachi okay so how was that uh, how was that just tell us about yourself little bit So you know, I I I grew up in in uh, in a family with uh, uh, you know Zoroastrian family in Karachi. You know, I had an older sister and myself, and I grew up in a family that was you know highly valued education. My sister and 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 I both went to the Convent of Jesus and Mary, and my parents were very committed to to that being uh, you know. a very big piece of our lives that we go to school we get educated and then and and then go overseas for higher education so i grew up in a family very focused on that and uh in in a neighborhood of the city that i think was near uh in or near clifton okay i understand that you received your early education from convent jesus and mary in karachi so what are your memories of uh, of that institution your friends and uh, and how you grew up in all all that environment you know when you get to my age those memories start fading but <laughs> but even so let me uh, tell you they they are very fond i know i think of the the convent of jesus and mary as as a place where i learned to think i actually don't think it matters exactly what you learn it matters that you learn to think and i think that was a good place for that i i learned to ask questions about things and and you know i had some very uh, formative uh educational experiences there and i'm also actually a pretty social person and so i also had a lot of uh, uh friendships that formed there as well okay and have you have you ever been uh, have you ever visited karachi again once you left pakistan yeah i've been back maybe twice in the last 30 years you know most of my family lives lives uh overseas now in, well, mostly in canada and the us so you know haven't had much as much reason to to visit pakistan uh and how you uh, how you opted to to become a scientist i mean was was you interested uh, how you how you got interested in science well you know i've actually been interested in it since i was a, a child uh, there's two pieces to it there's a the one thing which was sort of intrinsic interest and then the other thing was it was it also gets you 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 it actually gets amplified by what you're good at so it turned out i was actually kind of a pretty good good at science and math and not all that skillful at at the humanities and so that sort of 
fed the interest as well. And then, of course, my 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 family was you know very supportive of of that. So it started sort of just as as I was a good student. I liked science and math, and I've always been curious about the universe and put all those three things together and. Uh, I had to be a scientist. I also could not be a biologist because I could couldn't bear dissecting living things. Oh, okay, and also tell me that uh, how, how what kind of the, uh, you are obviously you are you're in the first world and the kind of uh, environment you have there, the kind of facilities you have there. We don't have really back here in Pakistan and even in the, in the third world. What how you see that how can uh, the countries like Pakistan and and, and the third third world in, in general can uh, can can really have uh, that kind of uh, facilities here and how can we basically look forward to that kind of progress that the first world is 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 doing in these fields? You know, that's a really, really good question, really tough question. Look, there are some basic things every society has to do, which is to, you know, you have, we have to feed people, clothe them, give them housing. But once you get past those basics and give them safety, and once you get past those basics, then the things that make a society thrive are, are art and literature and science and discovery and music. And so, I kind of feel like to build the infrastructure to do fundamental research, first you ha any society has to take care of the basics and then start building up all these other things that make a society thrive. And so my answer is, I think, really just, you know, when every person in the society has access to education and opportunity is when all these other things come into place. Dr. Rajas, after your success, you have created a stir in Pakistan and now many girls must be looking for their career in science. What will be your advice to them? You know, my advice to, to every student and then certainly to, uh, to, to the, the, the young women is just you've got to do what gives you pleasure. And if it means a career in science, you've got to find a way to do it because that's the thing that will you know every person will be doing for the rest of their lives is the professional path they take a lot of other things in our lives change but that is the one one of the defining things of us so people should just do what they enjoy most and i think for all of of society whether it's in pakistan or elsewhere we have to create opportunities for young girls to to do what they're good at and do what they love to do and uh, you know th there's a scientist in every child and we have to cultivate that sense of wonder my question is that uh, what are your own personal goals how you are now uh, looking forward to uh, what kind of projects you will be undertaking and what are your personal goals uh, so so you know w with this discovery we've only just just peeled away the first layer of the secrets that the universe wants to to whisper to us and so for me i actually am going to continue working on the, the de these detectors the 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 ligo detectors that have, were part you know that enabled this discovery and uh, i'm an experimentalist i actually like to design and build things and so i'll continue to work on improving those detectors so we can actually um uh, make uh, discoveries farther out in the universe look at fainter objects Etc. So yeah, for the you know this the the future of this field is bright, and I'm excited to be part of it. Okay, Dr. Najis, what? Akhir mein main aapse ye puchna chahta hoon ki abhi aapko Urdu aati hai thodi bhot? No, I I I followed everything you you said. So, so I, I I'm not even going to try to answer that in Urdu. I t I told you before, if I talk in Urdu, your news show will turn into a comedy show. No, we have no problem. If you want to try to speak Urdu, please do it. I'll 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 say you know the the thing that I feel most sincerely about the response that you know that you know people in pakistan have had to uh, to my participation in in this discovery um shukriya my question is that is there any possibility of uh, your uh, your visit to pakistan in near future um, sure i'm uh, yeah i'm i'm you know i haven't made any plans but of course uh, it's it's possible so in the last uh, would you like to uh, I, I would like a message from you in urdu for all the Pakistanis? Uh, look, I, I'll have to do it, it mixed 
in, in mixed language. Um, yeah. you know, uh, for all for all your interest in this discovery and 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 your support of my participation in it, uh, to all Pakistanis, uh, bahat shukriya. Bahat shukriya. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Najaz, for your time. And uh, we are all obviously looking forward to, for more successes on your part and uh, the whole Pakistan and this, uh, this part of the world is obviously has, uh, is looking forward for your more successes in this. Thank you so much for joining us and for giving us this time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for, for having me.